Hello, Serious Survivor here. Today we're going to talk about different types of edible plants that are found commonly throughout the United States and North America. In a survival situation or emergency, the need to forage for food can become extremely important and can be the deciding factor in a life or death scenario. Some plants will keep you alive and are full of essential vitamins and minerals, while some can make you violently ill and even kill you. And this makes proper identification absolutely critical. Also, familiarize yourself with the types of plants that are in the immediate area or where you plan on bugging out to. Know your own body, the allergies you may or may not have. Some types of allergies are deadly and many types of plants belong to families that you may be allergic to, yet they have no physical resemblance to the plants that you are actually allergic to. Study before it's too late. Even in an urban or city survival situation, there are multitudes of wild edibles that you can find throughout the city. While these all aren't exactly the tastiest foods you can eat, you'll definitely have an advantage in a survival situation by having the skills to determine which plants are edible and which are not. Mushrooms. There are many types of edible mushrooms which can be found in the wilderness, rural, and urban areas, and some some mushrooms are highly poisonous and resemble edible species. Never eat wild mushrooms that you can't identify with 100% confidence. The risk is just too high. You could end up with diarrhea, hallucinations, and even death. Mushrooms will be discussed in a later video, with the exception of one that we're going to talk about, simply because there are so many different types and they are so very hard to distinguish between the poisonous and non-poisonous types. In a survival situation, if we cannot positively identify the plants in the immediate vicinity, we might be better off eating bugs for survival instead of plants. Most insects are edible and highly nutritious. As a general rule of thumb, many toxic or poisonous plants will exhibit one or more of the following characteristics. Milky or discolored sap. Spines, fine hairs or thorns. Beans, bulbs or seeds inside of pods. Bitter or soapy taste. Dill, carrot, parsnip, or parsley like foliage. Almond scent. Remember, cyanide smells like bitter almonds, and cyanide is a deadly toxin. Grain heads with pink, purplish, or black spurs. Three leaved grow patterns. Now keep in mind that this is just a general rule because a lot of edible plants will also fall into those categories, but it's better to be safe than sorry sometimes. If you want to be completely sure that an unknown plant is edible and you have the time, perform what's called the Universal Edibility Test. This test takes several hours, but upon completion, you will have positively identified species of plants that you may or may not be able to eat, and this will increase your chances of survival. Note that the Universal Edibility Test isn't foolproof. For example, stinging nettles will cause a reaction when they touch your skin but they are also one of the most well-known wild edible plants and are highly nutritious. You've just got to cook the nettles first. Step one. For the universal edibility test to work, you must fast for eight hours beforehand. Step two. Cut the plant up into its parts. Leaves, stems and stalks, roots, flowers, seeds. The reason for this is because some parts of a plant may be edible, whereas others are not and may even be poisonous. For example, rhubarb stalks are edible, whereas the leaves are toxic. You have to test each plant part individually for the edibility test to work. Step 3. Rub a plant part onto your skin to see if there is a reaction. Make sure that you are crushing the stalks and roots so the juices get onto your skin. If no reaction occurs within 8 hours, then continue to the next step. Step 4. If possible, cook a small portion of the plant parts or test them raw if you have to, but it's generally better to cook the plants. Some plants are poisonous when raw, but safe to eat when cooked. Also, it is generally better to eat plants cooked because they can be hard on your digestive tract if eaten raw, especially in the case with roots and tubers. Step 5. Put a small portion of the cooked or raw plant against your lips. Hold it there for at least three minutes. If the plant causes any sort of reaction, such as swelling or tingly feeling, then do not continue with the test. Consider that plant toxic. Step six, put the small plant portion into your mouth now. Do not eat or chew it. Let it stay on your tongue for about 10 to 15 minutes and see if there is any reaction. Step seven, now chew the plant, but don't swallow it. Chew it for 10 to 15 minutes. Step eight, Swallow the small piece of plant you've been chewing. Wait about eight hours after eating to see if any reactions occur. If you don't have any bad reactions after eating a small piece of the plant, then eat about a quarter cup of the plant, cooked or raw, whichever you prefer. Wait eight hours, and if there's no reaction, then consider it safe to eat. If you feel sick, get a rash, or have a bad reaction to any part of the test, 
wait eight more hours before restarting the test with a new plant so that your system is clean of the toxin. Acorns. Acorns are a great urban and wilderness edible plant because they are so full of protein. The problem is they contain tannins, which make them incredibly bitter and also upset your stomach. So you must leach out the tannins before you eat acorns. Basically, you need to shell them first. You can do this in bulk by smashing a bunch of acorns with a big rock and then separating out the meat. Then to leach out the tannins, just soak the acorns in some warm water for a few hours. Toss the water and then taste the acorns. If they are still bitter, repeat the soaking process until they don't taste bitter anymore. Amaranth. Native to the Americas, but found on most continents, amaranth is an edible weed. You can eat all parts of this plant, but be on the lookout for spines that appear on some of the leaves. While not poisonous, these leaves do contain oxalic acid and may contain large amounts of nitrates if grown in nitrate-rich soil. It's recommended that you boil the leaves to remove the acid and nitrates. Don't drink the water after you boil the plant. With that said, you can eat the plant raw. Arrowhead. Arrowhead is found among canals in shallow water, it was recorded in Lewis and Clark's journals that they ate arrowhead during their journeys in the 1800s. People usually wade in shallow water for the arrow-shaped leaves and pull up the tuber of the plant, which looks like a potato. And like a potato, it can be peeled and roasted or diced and used in any stew-like dish. Asparagus. This vegetable grows in the wild in most of Europe and parts of North Africa, West Asia, and North America. Wild asparagus has a much thinner stalk than the grocery store variety. It's also a great source of vitamin C, thiamine, potassium, and vitamin B6. You can eat it raw or boil it like you would your asparagus at home. Burdock is a medium to large sized plant with big leaves and purplish thistle-like flower heads. The plant is native to the temperate areas of the Eastern Hemisphere. However, it has been naturalized in parts of the world, including the Western Hemisphere. You can eat the leaves and the peeled stalks of the plant, either raw or boiled. The leaves have a bitter taste, so boil them twice before eating, and this is recommended to remove the bitterness. The root of the plant can also be peeled, boiled, and eaten. Blackberry. The thorny blackberry bushes produce delicious black and purple berries that ripen in the summer. The roots and shoots of the plant are also edible when peeled and cooked. The roots can be dried out and infused into a tea that can be used as an herbal remedy for the treatment of diarrhea. Cattail. Cattails are also known as punks in North America, are usually found near the edges of freshwater wetlands. Cattails were a staple in the diet of many Native American tribes. Most of a cattail is edible. You can boil or eat raw the rootstock of the plant. The rootstock is usually found underground. The best part of the stem is near the bottom where the plant is mainly white. Boil the leaves like you would spinach. The female flower spike can be broken off and eaten like a corn on the cob in the early summer when the plant is first developing. The roots are edible and taste decent when roasted, boiled, or baked, a bit like potato. You can also eat the center of the stalks when they are still young in the spring. Chestnuts. Like walnuts, chestnuts are another nut that is native to the temperate regions of the northern hemisphere. Chestnuts are edible raw or roasted, though typically preferred roasted. Peel the brown skin to excess the yellowish-white edible portion. Now the unrelated horse chestnut seeds are poisonous. Native Americans use various parts of the American chestnut to treat ailments such as whooping cough, heart conditions, and chafed skin. Chickweed. You'll find this herb in temperate and arctic zones. The leaves are hefty and you'll often find small white flowers on the plant. They usually appear between May and July. You can eat the leaves raw or boiled. They're high in vitamins and minerals. Chickweed is a plant that gardeners spend a lot of time trying to get rid of, but in a survival situation you'll be grateful that this plant is there. It grows pretty much anywhere that there is moist, rich soil. The stem, leaves, and flowers are all edible and can be eaten raw as a salad or boiled and cooked. Chicken of the Woods. A lot of people aren't familiar with this one. Now when you find this, you've really scored. Chicken of the Woods grows in shelf-like clusters on trees and on the ground. This fungus lacks a central stem and when broken open looks like white chicken meat. A similar cousin, Hen of the Woods, looks almost identical but it is less orange and more of a brownish tan. These can be prepared the same way as chicken and it's a great addition to your pasta sides or other backcountry meals. Just make sure it's fresh or you may find maggots inside. Chicken of the woods are most likely to be found from August through October or later, but are sometimes found as early as June. This is a mushroom and it is very noticeable from long distance because of its size and very bright colors. 
It grows on many types of dead or mature trees with hardwood, such as oak or beech. They grow very fast. Usually when you find it there, there will be a lot. Younger specimens can have a large amount of clear watery juice pour out of the fruit body immediately after you cut it. That's called wet collection, and it's a good sign it will be a choice edible. Chicken of the woods can be one of the most variable mushrooms in terms of edibility. Some collections are great, some aren't. Don't give up if your first collection is underwhelming. Often with larger specimens, you may only want to use the more tender outer edges of the cap. Be sure to cook them thoroughly. Chickens are good sauteed, deep fried, baked, and may be used in soups. They usually have a lemony, chicken-like taste and texture. Chicory. The purple flowering chicory plant has many uses, both as a food source and as a medicinal plant. The leaves can be consumed raw in a salad, while the roots can be boiled and eaten as a vegetable. When the roots are roasted and pulverized, they can also be used as a coffee substitute. You'll find chicory growing in Europe, North America, and Australia. It's a bushy plant with small blue lavender and white flowers. You can eat the entire plant. Pluck off the young leaves and eat them raw or boil them. The chicory's roots will become tasty after boiling, and you can also pop the flowers in your mouth for for a quick snack. Clovers. Clovers are actually edible and they're found just about everywhere there's an open grassy area. You can spot them by their distinctive leaflets. You can eat clovers raw but they taste better boiled. Side note, we know that clovers can occasionally have four leaflets instead of the usual three. These four leaf clovers, like other rarities, are considered to be lucky. Clovers can also have five, six, or more leaflets, but these are much rarer. The record for the most leaflets on a clover is 56 and it was set on May 10th, 2009. This beat the 21 leaf clover record that was set in June 2008 by the same discoverer who had also held the prior world record of 18. Curled Dock. You can find Curled Dock in Europe, North America, South America, and Australia. It's distinguished by a long, bright red stalk that can reach heights of three feet. You can eat the stalk raw or boiled. Just peel off the outer layers first. It's recommended that you boil the leaves with several changes of water in order to remove its naturally bitter taste. The dandelion plant is probably one of the most easily identifiable plants. It's similar to the chicory plant. A dandelion can be eaten raw in salads or boil the roots if you're looking for a more vegetable taste. The roots can also be used as a coffee substitute. If you look hard enough in the supermarket, you might even see some dandelion wine. The entire plant is edible, roots, leaves, and flowers. Eat the leaves while they're still young. Mature leaves taste bitter. If you do decide to eat the mature leaves, boil them first to remove their bitter taste. Boil the roots before eating them as well. You can drink the water you boiled the roots in as a tea and use the flower as a garnish for a dandelion salad. Choose flowers which haven't bloomed yet as they will have the mildest taste. In the fall, dandelion roots can be harvested and dried. Daylily. Be extremely careful when identifying this plant because there are several plants that look very similar to this, such as nightshade, angel's trumpet, some buttercups, and many more. But these orange flowers grow throughout temperate regions. The flower itself can be eaten in a variety of ways, boiled and even deep fried. The leaves can be eaten raw or cooked up like any other green. This is one of the tastiest edible plants you will find in an urban environment. The flowers taste excellent and can be eaten raw or sauteed in a bit of butter. The stalks are also edible, but don't taste as good. They they are slightly bitter and a bit tough. Day lilies don't have bulbs like other lilies. They have little tubers that look like sweet potatoes and they actually taste like a sweet potato somewhat. Saute the tubers in butter or boil and mash them. Don't eat the tubers raw because it can give you indigestion. Fiddlehead ferns. Fiddlehead ferns are basically just ferns that haven't fully developed yet. They're incredibly tasty and have a nice crunch to them when eaten raw. Fiddleheads are the tightly coiled tips of ferns. The fiddleheads in North America we eat are usually from the ostrich fern. Ostrich ferns are fairly common, especially in temperate areas. These can be found mostly in early spring when ferns grow their new shoots. The young fern fronds are mainly available by foraging. Other ferns can be toxic, so make sure you identify these positively. Fiddleheads have a grassy, spring-like flavor with a hint of nuttiness. Many people agree that they taste like a cross between asparagus and young spinach. Field pennycress. 
Field pennycress is a weed found in most parts of the world. Its growing season is early spring to late winter. You can eat the seeds and leaves of the field pennycress raw or boiled. The only caveat with the field pennycress is not to eat it if it's growing in contaminated soil. The pennycress is what's called a hyperaccumulator of minerals, meaning that it absorbs any and all minerals around it, and that includes harmful. This can be a bad trait if the soil is in any way contaminated as the contaminants are distributed throughout the plant. Fireweed. This plant is found primarily in the northern hemisphere. Fireweed is a tall, showy wildflower that grows from sea level to the subalpine zone. Fireweed thrives in open meadows, along streams, roadsides, and forest edges. In some places, the species is so abundant that it can carpet entire meadows with brilliant pink flowers. The name fireweed stems from its ability to colonize areas burned by fire rapidly. It was one of the first plants to reappear after the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. You can identify fireweed by its purple flower and the unique structure of the leaves veins. The veins are circular rather than terminating on the edges of the leaves. It's best eaten young when the leaves are tender. Mature fireweed plants have tough and bitter tasting leaves. You can eat the stalk of the plant as well. The flowers and seeds have a peppery taste. Fireweed is a great source of vitamins A and C.